together as a much stronger country. Kilda. I call Denise Lee. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm honoured to stand and take a call in this debate today, the 125th anniversary of women's suffrage in New Zealand. I am the 138th female MP in New Zealand history. <laughs> it's truly a day of celebration. 125 years ago, women stood up and claimed their equal status and they demanded the right to vote, the right to be included and the right to have their voices heard. And it's humbling to stand here in the House today and pay tribute to the women who led this charge. In 1893, Kate Shepherd and 32,000 other women took control. They not only uh, did that fundamentally to change New Zealand society for better, but they started a fire around the world for other women too. While today is of huge national significance, all politics is local. And so I want to take the opportunity to highlight and pay tribute to a key woman in the suffrage movement from my own electorate of Monga Kiekia, Elizabeth Yates. She was a strong supporter of the suffrage movement. Elizabeth Yates was the actually the first woman to vote in the Onihanga electorate under the new, back then, Electoral Act of 1893. She was determined to keep the movement strong, and so she stood for the mayoralty of Onihanga and won the election just a few short months later in November. Not only did she do that, that signalled uh, that she was the very first female mayor in the entire British Empire. So a massive, uh, significant moment for my electorate, Monga Kiekia, for Onihanga, for New Zealand and for the British Empire. It's a privilege for me to represent and be part of a community that has that pioneering spirit such as Elizabeth Yates did. And it's also a privilege for me to be the patron of the Onihanga Fensible and Historic Society, guardians of our Onihanga past. Gender equality and pay equity are a target that we should be continuously working for, and we must take the opportunities to reach this goal and do so and seize any moment that we can without delay. So it is disappointing, uh, Madam Speaker, that the government did turn its head to some of these opportunities. They've now twi uh, voted twice against the bill that I had in my name earlier in the year that would put in place a system to allow women to lodge pay equity claims. It's an important issue, and I'd hope to see some progress on it from a government that had previously said that it was a priority for them. So I surmised back in March, when my bill went through this House for its first and only reading, that the government would wait for the suffrage anniversary to produce their version, and that's exactly what happened. So what's the problem with this? Women have been waiting all year from the passage or the non-passage of my bill for the government to have their suffrage day photo op today. They could have got onto this much, much earlier. Um, one might wonder if they've been playing politics with pay equity. Having just seen the bill a very, very short time ago today, it is my uh, understanding um, initial um, summation that 90% of it is the same content of the bill that I put through back in March. I'd like to switch gears now, Madam Speaker, by acknowledging um, some very strong women in my family. I'm from um, a family of three girls. I'm the middle of three girls. My mother, Loris Lee, um, is a hugely civic-minded and kind and wonderful um, nurturing mum and female and leader in her community. She shepherded Rochelle Lee um, and Angela Lee, my two sisters, whom I adore and have been towers of strength for me, not only in my personal life, but in my career. I think my father deserves a mention. He believed in hard labor from the very get-go, gender blind. We had to do everything that sons would have done. Um, and my dad, he, I'm not sure what he think about this, but he's a feminist from a long way back. He just may not know it. Um, I'm raising two daughters, Sydney and McKenna. They face many issues, Madam Speaker, that come their way, and I'm doing my best as a single mum to foster the resilience in them that I see already. The Book of Proverbs has a quote. It says, a woman is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. And it's my hope that my daughters, like many strong women before them, the suffrage women of old, will steer down the barrel of adversity with assurance that they too can laugh at the days to come, and I'll be there right beside them.
I call Priyanka Radhakrishnan. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to begin with a Fakatoki.